Today I'm going to talk about how about how uh, it's possible that I went to 59 countries. I'm 23 right now, by the way. Uh, so it doesn't sound yeah. First of all, the most important thing, which really affects uh, how many places you can visit and how easy it is for you, it's privilege, and it's actually you know that's that's why some people have visited so many places and doesn't make you any better than other people that you have visited more places than those people because uh like first of all uh, some people have passports which are stronger than, than other passports some people with weak passports they have to do a lot of things to get a visa to another country and it's not just like you know in some countries you just uh, to get a visa you just pay and you get it and in other countries you know if you have a very weak passport you have to do a lot of things things to get this visa uh some people live in places from which you cannot you know you need special permits to leave and i'm actually not joking it's a reality for many millions of people um so yeah i have a i have a european passport and <laughs> that would make it much easier i'm not saying it would it would be impossible if i didn't have a european passport but it would be much more difficult and um i know a lot of people who for example are waiting until they get the new passport and the first thing they want to do is to travel the world because it wasn't possible to, for them before and also another thing which is very obvious is money and also time because like yeah traveling actually is not as expensive as people think it is like it's not always expensive you can do this cheaper but still you need some money and it's still way easier for you if you have more money to spend than versus when you have no money or very little money uh so yeah for example if you uh, live in a country where people earn a lot of money and everything you know usually in those countries is way um, or at least a bit exp more expensive than anywhere you go abroad you have a lot of money and if you live in Bangladesh let's say for example like in any country where like the wages are usually not that high um, unless you have a very uh, well-paid job uh, everywhere abroad it will be like way you know it will be basically broke I mean it's even if you have a well-paid job then it, they, those things they will be expensive for you because you got used to those low prices so if you live i live in one of the most expensive countries in the world i think so anywhere abroad is always cheap for me but at least you know i live in an expensive country but at least our salaries are quite high um and i don't have a particularly high salary at all but you know it's still you know it still helps a lot so uh yeah and uh, another thing is time that you need to when you have a job you need to request a leave you need to you know it's not always easy to get a leave some people for example have some duties from which they cannot escape like for example they are taking care of somebody and then they they cannot go abroad and there are also people which travel a lot but yeah that's that's another uh, proof that traveling a lot doesn't make you any better because some people for example travel a lot because they have a, a unethical job <laughs> that requires a lot of traveling like you know most of politicians they travel a lot are they better than you no at all they they are actually much much worse than you they are actually the worst of the worst but they travel the most and same comes with you know very uh, important business people and you know people who like break a lot of rules of basic fundamental human decency <laughs> but they get to travel the most and they are better than us like actually people say that traveling teaches you mm, no i mean it can teach you if you want to learn but if you don't want to learn you like we are very very capable of staying very very dumb even if we are given you know everything on a plate the language on a plate like people are you know we are very capable of adapting to staying dumb if you want, if we want to i know people who have been into a lot of countries like you know those rich kids who can go anywhere and then they don't know anything about those countries <laughs> they just go there you know they take selfies they um brag about how they went there you know there are a lot of people who go to countries and they don't respect the culture of a country and they think that every everything is, is supposed to you know cater to them and their own needs um you know especially white people <laughs> everywhere uh so not always but a lot of times it's like this so yeah that's that was the very long introduction and um, let's come to you know the main topic 
uh, it doesn't, it's not as, as good as it sounds, you know, because I've been to 59 countries, but actually, you know, I said, or maybe I didn't say, I live in Europe, so it's like, Europe already has 40 something countries. And actually, I've been to every European country, which makes my count of countries much higher. So it's not as good as it sounds. And also when I said that you can make traveling cheap. Yeah, that's the thing in Europe that when you travel from one European country to another European country, sometimes the tickets, they are very cheap. And I traveled in a way that I would always look to which country this country has cheap flights. And I would always connect those countries. Like sometimes these were like ridiculously cheap flights, especially like before Corona. Some of them, they costed 10 euros to fly from one city to another, which is in another country. So it wasn't that difficult, like seriously, like, uh, for example, on one trip, I went to Andorra, Monaco, Ireland, three new countries that I haven't been to before. And actually it was like, uh, you know, first I started from Catalonia, I was in Barcelona and I, I took the bus from Barcelona to Andorra. Then from Andorra, I took a bus to Toulouse, from Toulouse, I took the bus to Nice and from Nice, I flight to Ireland. And actually the flight to Ireland, I, I think it was like five euros or 10 euros, like it was the cheapest flight. But I was like, oh, this is how I will go home, you know, I will go through, through, through Ireland, you know. <laughs> so that's the way I combined it sometimes. And sometimes I would, you know, um, I would visit like few new countries in one, in one month and it wasn't as difficult as it sounds because also those countries they are basically open and i recommend if you want to visit a lot of countries i recommend looking um you know coming back to the passport topic again because you know for those rules that apply to you when you enter a country depend on your passport i mean not only on a passport because if you're <laughs> if you're for example a black and you have european passport you may have worse experience at the border uh, than white people that still is a thing uh, but uh, it depends mostly on your passport mm, like according to the law they should treat people with the same passport equally you know um, that some people are bitches it's the other thing <laughs> so uh, when you enter a country um, yeah it depends on your passport if you need a visa if you don't need a visa so I recommend to you looking at how many countries you can enter without having a visa or like having very little efforts to get a visa because actually don't get discouraged if you need to get a visa because some visas they are very 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 easy to get like a lot of them so it's often like you just pay money and you get the visa and that's it so uh, especially if you have a strong passport and uh, actually it's very surprising to look what countries can let you in because i was recently like super surprised because i was looking I was going to Uzbekistan, and that was my plan, I will go to Uzbekistan, but then I looked at Uzbekistan, and I was like, oh, I see, you know, a lot of countries around Uzbekistan, I knew that those countries are there, but I just looked, and it was kind of tempting, you know, because if I paid so much to go to Uzbekistan, by the way, I didn't pay that much, but still, you know, and I took so much time to go to Asia, I will, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, I like combining countries, I don't want to, you know, if I want to visit those countries again, I will have to, you know, buy, buy another flight in the same direction, so blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, it sounds tempting to visit those countries, but I was like, I'm sure they, they have visa, you know, because I haven't heard, like, a, about a lot of people, for example, going to Tajikistan. And guess what? Actually, all of those countries that I checked, maybe not counting Turkmenistan, but I knew that Turkmenistan is, like, more closed. But also, it's not extremely close it's less close than i expected you actually can get that visa but you just you just need a visa you know so you know and most of those countries around uzbekistan not counting tajikistan not, not tajikistan turkmenistan uh they actually didn't require any visa like i could just go to you know without a visa <laughs> to all of those countries so i combined like my trip in uzbekistan kyrgyzstan and kazakhstan i didn't uh take um opportunity to go to Tajikistan because I was like you know they still require covid test and it would be a bit stressing and also like, like it's already free country so it's already a lot and already like my my journey to Asia was already complicated because I had a lot of changes in between so you know uh, so that's uh, what you can look at it's actually quite surprising and quite you know if you have a good passport it's very surprising how many countries that you haven't even heard about the people visiting you can visit without a visa so especially that each year 
new countries um, draw those visa requirements. So it's actually more like easy than I uh, expect. Uh, so yeah, an important thing is that, you know, you try to uh, connect those countries that are, for example, next to each other, especially if you spend a, a lot of money for a flight there. Uh, you can combine the countries that are very close to each other and um, and that's that's a very good way to visit them. By the way, another thing, um, how I visited those countries. So I started traveling when I was a child and I would travel with my parents, but it, was, it wasn't like very frequent. It was like, for example, once a year we would go somewhere or twice a year we would go somewhere and we usually would go to a new country <laughs> every year um those countries they weren't like very interesting countries to me <laughs> i always hated choices of my parents when i was a child right now i'm very grateful because right now you know adulthood changes everything suddenly you are very grateful that they paid for you and they gave you a free trip somewhere and uh, as a child you you don't look at this that way um so i'm i'm really grateful for them for that at this point um but i went to a lot of uh countries uh, you know, you know, two countries may uh, maybe uh, maybe one country a year, and these countries were mostly European. That's why I didn't like this choice that much. Because uh, to be honest, I don't like Europe that much. I mean, I've been to every European country, but the only reason is that I live in Europe right now. So I was like, you know, I want to use it because later maybe I will move out of Europe, and going to Europe will be way more expensive for me. So I went to all of those countries and. But when I was living with my parents, I wouldn't travel that often. But when I moved away from my parents, I wanted to use every opportunity. And honestly, I've done a lot of really stupid things. Because when I moved out of my parents, because they couldn't control me anymore, I would go somewhere a lot. Like, uh, most of the countries that I visited, I visited after I already moved out from my parents. And um, in the first year first one and a half of a year of living alone i went to every european country <laughs> because um yeah i was like they cannot forbid me anymore and it actually would take me much less time if corona didn't start because for some time it was you know illegal to go anywhere uh but yeah and it wasn't that that difficult right now i'm moving i'm uh visiting countries that are outside of europe because i've been to all those european countries already and i'm planning to go to some asian countries this autumn inshallah and i also combine those countries even even i like to combine them even more because you know i pay a lot for the flight so uh yeah i'm and my my wet dream is uh, latin american countries by the way but the flights they are so expensive like you know even to asia you can kind of you know you can kind of find ways to go maybe with more changes and spend less money than going to latin america like those those flights they are ridiculously expensive <laughs> but i will be sure to combine countries when i go there like seriously i don't want to spend that much money and also there are like you know a lot of ways to spend less money like for example staying in the cheapest place possible when i was uh traveling just after i moved out of my parents i was very <laughs> my first solo trip was so bad i didn't know how much money should i take with myself so i ended up with no money and i was you know i spent the night in the street 